Capricorn singles, welcome. Doing your first half of December singles, really call it Meet the Soulmate. And uh, what I mean by meet your soulmate is I'm just asking spirit to describe the one that's right for you. Um, so uh, I think we have more than one of those, like there's a quiver of them. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I take cards and I'm just going to, it's kind of a non-triggery and it's always positive read. As, uh, if you see three of swords, not going to be your person um, leaving you or anything. We're just going to describe aspects of them. And we already know it's the right one for you, okay? I'm not saying you're perfect. So uh, I pick up on uh, personality, behavior, a lot more, um, history, personal history. We'll look at uh, four pillars where I structure with two cards for the emotional aspects, two for intellectual aspects, uh, two for um, em uh, relationship and sexual aspects, Venus and Mars, and two for uh, lifestyle core values. So. I'll pick up on the moon sign usually, and the sun, and the Venus and Mars at least, maybe Mercury, so, as we go along, so if you're not astrologers, there's plenty of sites now, if you just another day of birth even, you can get most of that, um, so I'm really looking for a confirmation here as we go in here and talk to see, uh, see what this person's really like and what they've been through, um, and so when you meet them, this is designed to be predictive in the near future, in the first half of uh, December, already December, it could be any time after you hear this, um, maybe it is, maybe you've already met him, but um, let's see what we've got, guys, being single is kind of cool, you know, <laughs> odd thing, uh, uh, it's also nice, believe me, to find the right one, um, but, you know, anything's possible, look at it that way, <laughs> Sagittarius moon, this is where I read the moon, I was going to call it because it's a Sagittarius car, can't be the other way. Also read above is uh, intellect and below is kind of more conscious energy. And uh, the sun, oh, uh, temperance over the world. Wow. Um, before I go off, and I mean go off, because temperance over the world. This is their emotional selves. Where I read their childhood, the relationship with the parents. Um, I'd say another thing, speaking of astrology, uh, I'm a Sagittarius, Sun, Mercury, Mars, and um, Jupiter, but this person has this Sagittarius moon, and every Sagittarius moon I've known, seems like a lot of them, never lovers, um, but they're the most interesting people, they're just so well apprised of the world, you know, if... Uh, some of us see a title to something we go, oh, that's interesting. We may or may not even like click on it in today's world or open a book or, you know, this person actually read about it and just because they have a curious mind. So a Sagittarius moon is always a very curious mind. And like, so what the moon's all about, what makes us feel emotionally secure and okay. Well, this is the baby. If you give them the play keys, they're gonna sit there and be occupied take them away they might freak out <laughs> so you might hear that story from their mother it's like oh yeah it was bigger than those plastic keys <laughs> with the world card underneath this um i got i haven't seen this in a while i would say this was someone that essentially was born into wealth you know um, and I really feel like with, with when you get temperance over the world, it, I feel like this person is protected somehow. Now we got to remember, just because somebody's born into wealth, it spiritually doesn't make a lick of difference if they're born into poverty. Um, and I think you might be dealing here with, I'm seeing this a lot, I'm trying to say this just on my mind, but it, I mean, it's like someone... I could definitely say this, they, you would say about them, and I bet anyone would say about them, this is a person that makes the world, leaves the world a little bit better than they found it, at least, at least. They would say this person here, Capricorn, leaves the world a little bit better than they found it, you know, um, and I'm thinking like very easygoing, you know, um, type of personality too, and I mean with the world here, this is in the core of the unconscious position in them, Grounded as fuck. Ground. I think they could have the moon in the second house here. It could be that kind of grounded. 
you know or if not i mean maybe the moon's like on their ic right there like in the fourth house on the ic okay here we have the emperor another powerful card this is representing their intellect gambi aries <laughs> pretty easy when the emperor comes out in that position and temperance comes out um, I, you know, I'm not uh, having to play any kind of psychic guessing game with that one. And the King of Swords under this Emperor in Aries. I'm going to say I saw Queen of Swords and I said that was the uh, in a similar position that represented a Mercury in Aquarius. I think this is a Mercury in Aquarius. So you've got someone here with a Fire Sun, a Sagittarius Sun. And uh, I mean, a fire moon, Sagittarius sun, it's a very bright sun, and an Aries uh, sun here. And they have this Aquarius Mercury to go with it. Um, so you probably have the moon, like on the IC, well grounded. Um, if it's a Sagittarius moon and it's on the IC, that could make them a Virgo rising. Might be where I'm picking up on the world. They got an earth rising. That could work. That could work, right? Um, and it could put their son in the eighth house. Uh, that's making a hell of a lot of sense. Um, and then that would put their Mercury possibly in the seventh house. You know? Um, looking at the other at relationships but just look at how powerful this is and, and this is a powerful person uh, uh, and I think they would have a groundedness about them a sturdiness about them uh, uh, if you were in like a group at a party or something uh, after a period of time I think you'd see this person like a planet and it would be, be other moons like orbiting them you know, and even maybe they're not even saying that much. They are an Aries, you know, uh, with a Sagittarius moon. Um, I mean, they could be just chatting affably. It's not like they might be discoursing on something. There's just going to be something about them that's kind of like magnetic. And I think they're going to be really basically upbeat and positive. Another way this person could be a person that tells jokes, you know, and really good jokes that uh, have a little bite to them. And... I just see this person with a, a lot of uh, attention. I think it, it, over time they would come to command something. I'll try to get an idea as we go along, Capricorn. Now we're looking at their Venus and Mars energy, their relationship and sexual interest, uh, nature, ten of swords. Okay, that's challenging. Let's see what we got in the two of wands. And... Um, you have this Aries. I think they got an Aries Mars to go with their Aries Sun. Okay. Okay. So keep in mind now we know. I know I'm putting this together. I'm not going to. I don't know if I'm being. I, I've just got to be what I feel. And I feel it's pretty specific. Now, you know how the cusps go. Maybe their Mars is not. It's going to be an Aries. Maybe it's not in the eighth house. Maybe it's a split house. It's in the ninth or seventh. Um, seventh most likely, but it's going to be in Aries Mars, and you know how an Aries Mars is, um, especially to go with the Aries Sun. So this is going to be someone that is, they can kind of act without thinking, um, and I got to think they're going to have an Aquarius Venus uh, to go with this, this Aquarius Mercury. So now think about what we're getting here. Mercury in Aquarius, Venus in Aquarius. Mercury uh, is wonderful, and Aquarius does great there. Venus, you know, uh, my girlfriend's got Venus Aquarius. She's amazing and so sensitive and loving, um, you know, but it's going to be wanting to think their feelings about love or relationship more than feel them. Could be their love language is words, is communication. Um, it really could be because with the Sagittarius moon, you know, they really want someone that can that it's like you don't want to play tennis someone that can't hit it back. So when they're up discoursing on one thing after another and their fast mind, they, they do want someone that can come back and kind of hold 
I don't know, hold their energy, um, hold their interest, you know, because also this, this could be a little draining, uh, this kind of energy. But I don't know what this person with the world, the emperor, they're pretty gr uh, grounded. So I don't, I'm not sure they're drained. I don't think they're going to be like an energy vampire. This person's actually throwing energy off, if anything. That's why people are orbiting around them. It's like they feel their light. <laughs> they feel their energy, they feel their light. They're like, ah, oh, they want to get just like a nonverbal. They don't ever, very few probably even thinking about, why am I standing here listening to this dude <laughs> or this woman, you know? Uh, I don't even know. Um, so in terms of the way they're going to love, uh, they're going to be um, um, like a Pisces kind of energy to the Venus uh, and Aquarius where they're just very open-minded and open. And they kind of love everyone unconditionally, you know. Um, so it's not so personal. I'm Venus and Scorpio, so it's all about personal. It's not, it's not good there, Venus and Scorpio, so I know it's not good. But that's, that represents how it works with it. With it being in Aquarius, it's a little detached and... Um, They'll have an emphasis on fairness, on kind of logic, on reason, um, and especially with the Mercury to go along with it, they could be good job, it would be impossible, guys. Um, and then with an Aries Mars, let me tell you this, I'm a Sag, Aries Mars, so it was like, uh, I have a Mars, Sagittarius Mars, um, and it was in the eighth house, and if this is in the eighth house, holy shit. Now, another thing about your person with an 8th house, Mars, and a sun, they may tell a story of being a hero. I'm not even kidding, man or woman. This is the woman who's attacked by a couple big thugs for a purse, and she's old and whatever. And somehow, when the police arrive, she's standing there with her purse, and these guys are not the fuck out. Or there's three guys or something. And it's like this person that has something in them did a chart like this and I saw it and I told her this happened and it did. She told me a pretty wild story about a near death experience somebody tried to murder her. It's, you know, it's, she didn't play that. Had this very position, Mars in the 8th house. So Mars in the 8th house is the hero. Mars in the 8th house rushes into burning buildings, particularly with a Venus and Aquarius or Pisces really. Both have that energy. They, they're not going to stop and say, Oh my God, that house is burning, but it's not my fucking house. Venus is Scorpio. <laughs> They're gonna be like, oh my God, that house is burning. I gotta go in there and save whoever's in it. There's a human being in there. And with an Aries Mars, I mean, it can be really brave. And 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 you know, this person might even be noticeable. This person could also, man or woman, could be a soldier, could be a police officer of some kind, right? Law enforcement. Um, they're not afraid. They're very good, quick mind. They can assess situations, and when there's forces necessary, they ain't afraid to use it, and they probably know how to use it. You know. Um, wow. So, and also, like you might be pregnant before the door closes. Once you hit the bedroom, you could actually be pregnant before you even hit the bed with this Aries Mars. Another way it works. It's fire. In terms of love and relationship with an Aries Sun. It's going to be fiery, passionate lovemaking. So I hope you like it that way, because that's how they're going to want it. And look at that emperor. Argue with them. I don't think so. So five of cups, this is in their core values and lifestyle. And that five of cups I'm sitting here looking at is next to that ten of swords. And seven of pentacles is next to the two of wands. So this person learned a lot from experience. Sagittarius learns from experience. That moon is strong for them. I tell you another thing about this person with the world, they're traditional. They're going to have something from childhood with them. Um, they're going to probably basically have the same beliefs they had from childhood. Um, they probably have respect for their parents. Um, you know, this kind of thing. Um, and like I told you, this person probably has a good deal of wealth. Or at least they came from a good deal of wealth. And when I see the Five of Cups next to the Ten of Swords, that's something ending emotionally in them having a very hard time of something. So I, I got to think, what I got, one of their parents may have died. And they might be a little bit older, I don't know, 30s, 40s here, 50s, who knows, like that. And um, maybe that really had an impact upon them. And with this being the Venus, possibly could have been even the mother. Or there could have been something... Um, 
I feel like there's like this, they went through some separation from a female in their life that was significant, possibly a sister, probably a mother, it's like a family thing. Um, and it really hit them very hard. Somehow may have impacted their career. Possibly, just logically thinking, I've had this happen, people have had this happen. You gotta take time off or quit and because mom needs you, you know, your sister or your brother needs you. And you go do it. A story like this here. Um, and then finally, coming in with temperance and ending with the Seven of Pentacles. I think like they have, they have it about right now. Um, and this, I think, too, is them kind of coming to terms with their own personal wealth. I'd say it, but that's how I read this person. This is first. I'm not saying like they're gold mine or nothing, but it's just like I, everybody, somebody's got money. <laughs> it's only 1%, but they are out there. And, you know, this is someone that really uh, learns over time uh, about their self worth, about their self value, about the value of things, the value of things. Um, and maybe this incident when they had to deal with this emotional difficulty with a loved one where I think they may have came to their aid, has re really made them think about things, you know. So I would say this person is extremely mature. They might not have been, but they are now. Um, in um, kind of, um, you're looking at someone, Capricorn, um, who's been seasoned uh, by the fires of life, you know. So their metal has been hardened, this kind of thing. Um, I bet you like if somehow uh, this person you could go back in time and experience what they were when they were 17 it would just shock you it would be like it, like two different people night and day so let me know what you think of this caps and uh, leave a comment comments only help the channel please help the channel subscribe um, hit the bell but Capricorns always Friday Sag and Cap day here okay if you do want to see um, the Soul Family Read, that's up too uh, for the weekend. That's up as uh, all signs of read through, so you can find yourself in there, timestamp Capricorn. And that's more about alignment with our um, manifestation, which could become relevant. This is someone that's coming up, should be coming into your purview anytime in the next couple weeks. Thank you guys.